so we have gram positive rods gram positive rods mean that they are rod shaped and they are stained gram positive during the typical gram staining procedures they will take up the gram stain that's why they are known as gram positive and they are rod shaped that's why they are known as gram positive rods and they include spore forming gram positive rods a spore forming gram positive rods mean that they will form spores whereas non spore forming gram positive rods mean that they will not form spores so broadly we have these two categories one are spore forming gram positive rods and others are non spore forming gram positive rods Uh, then we have spore forming gram positive rods which further include bacillus and clostridium species okay so bacillus species and clostridium species in non spore forming gram positive rods we have corny bacterium we have listeria and we have gardenella so that was first property which is spore formation second property is anaerobic growth so anaerobic growth mean ability to grow without oxygen so only remember only clostridium species can grow without oxygen so the anaerobic growth is only the property of clostridium species whereas bacillus corny bacterium listeria rest all others do not show anaerobic growth that means they will show aerobic growth they will grow in oxygen only clostridium grow in the absence of oxygen then another property uh, which is exotoxin production what is exotoxin exotoxin is a harmful chemical substance which is secreted by bacteria and it may be responsible for pathogenesis of these bacteria in living organism so bacillus produces exotoxin which is a harmful chemical substance clostridium also produces exotoxin corny bacterium also produces exotoxin but listeria and gardenella do not produce exotoxin so some properties of gram positive rods spore forming and non spore forming so then we will discuss the pathogenesis of each organism first we will talk about the bacillus species so bacillus further include bacillus anthrax and bacillus cereus okay so bacillus anthrax uh, is spore forming first of all and remember uh, it causes disease which is known as anthrax so bacillus anthrax causes disease which is known as anthrax bacillus cereus causes disease which is known as food poisoning so bacillus cereus is commonly responsible for food poisoning and the diseases are caused by its exotoxin and so the exotoxins or spores of the bacillus anthrax will enter the body either through cutaneous through the skin wounds if you have skin wounds it's causing cutaneous anthrax or it can enter through the respiratory tract through the lungs which is known as pulmonary anthrax so we have two types one is cutaneous anthrax and other is pulmonary anthrax regarding bacillus cereus uh, its exotoxin production and spore germination occur in cases of reheated rice so if you reheat the rice old rice uh, then you are at the risk of bacillus cereus poisoning so that causes food poisoning typically and so the pathogenesis is because of the exotoxin exotoxin of bacillus anthrax and the bacillus cereus pathogenicity is also because of the exotoxin we said that they produces exotoxin so the exotoxin is also known as enterotoxin because uh, it is present in the gastrointestinal system entero word means intestine so it affects your intestine that's why it's known as enterotoxin and causes food poisoning symptoms uh, then final property is vaccine so vaccine availability so vaccine is only available for bacillus anthrax prevention uh, whereas no vaccine is available for bacillus cereus so here we have a figure uh, the figure shows Uh, typical cutaneous anthrax how cutaneous anthrax presents so the spores will affect the wounds and causing a uh, typical cutaneous anthrax then we have pathogenesis of clostridium species now we discussed bacillus we are discussing now the clostridium species so the first organism is clostridium tetani so clostridium tetani as the name indicate the disease it will cause is tetanus so what is tetanus so tetanus is uh, a disease that is associated with hyperflexion so there is too much flexion in the body or in other words you can say that there are spasms in the body uh, this is a picture showing hyper extension of the back you can see a very bending of the back of the body uh, this this is, uh, this position is also known as opisthotonus which is hyper extension of the back so this is tetanus when the muscles go into the spasm and uh, the transmission of uh, clostridium tetani is through the spores we said that they produce spores so spores in the soil will enter the wound so wound for example if you have a cut on the foot or you have a wound in the foot or if there is a thing for example a nail uh, which is contaminated with the soil uh, the spores can enter 
by causing injury or if there is already injury present in the foot so it will enter the body then we have a clostridium tetani mechanism of uh, action so the mechanism of action is through the mechanism of exotoxin now exotoxin how does exotoxin act exotoxin will inhibit the release of inhibitory neurotransmitter so by inhibiting the release of inhibitory neurotransmitter excitatory action will occur since inhibitory neurotransmitter will have inhibitory action so by inhibiting the inhibitory neurotransmitter excitatory stage of the body will occur that mean muscles will go into the spasm so then the prevention of clostridium tetani is through tocicide vaccine uh, tocicide vaccine is dpt vaccines diphtheria pertussis and tetanus three it provides protection against three organism one is the clostridium tetani second is pertussis and third is diphtheria so that is a vaccine is available for it now uh, we will discuss the clostridium botulinum another species of clostridium uh, the disease caused by clostridium botulinum is botulism botulism is associated with flaccid paralysis okay so tetanus causes spastic paralysis whereas botulism causes flaccid paralysis okay uh, that means there is more inhibitory action uh, promoted by clostridium botulinum whereas clostridium tetani promotes spastic action you know, that's the difference and how does is the transmission the transmission is through the food okay so orally exotoxin in the food may be ingested in case of clostridium botulinum exotoxin may be present in the food and that can be ingested usually improper canned food uh, is the major cause how does is action of exotoxin occur it blocks the release of acetylcholine acetylcholine is an excitatory neurotransmitter so it will block the excitatory neurotransmitter uh, so inhibitory action will be increased in case of clostridium botulinum so it causes flaccid paralysis so that's the action of uh, toxin of clostridium botulinum then prevention for clostridium botulinum is uh, you can have proper caning of the food we say that improper canned food is the major cause so proper caning of the food plus proper cooking of the food because exotoxin may be present in the food that is ingested so proper cooking of the food is important in order to prevent the clostridium botulinum so we said that clostridium botulinum causes flaccid paralysis tetanus causes spastic paralysis then we have clostridium perf perfringens uh, another species of clostridium uh, the disease caused by clostridium perfringens is one is gas gangrene and another disease is uh, food poisoning so what is gas gangrene gas gangrene is caused by spores in soil can enter the wound okay so spores in the soil can enter the wound for example the foot if there is a wound in the foot it can enter the wound and uh, this may cause gangrene as the name indicate gas gangrene gangrene is necrosis okay so necrosis of the area can occur and uh, regarding food poisoning the symptoms are caused by exotoxin if uh, present in the food they can be ingested so contaminated food with the exotoxin of clostridium perfringens may be ingested the action of uh, gas gangrene is because of the lecithinase so lecithinase is an enzyme associated with clostridium perfringens and this lecithinase may cause the necrosis seen in gas gangrene and uh, the action of food poisoning is associated with the super antigen so super antigen mean it's an antigen that's over stimulate your immune system causing too much inflammatory reaction so that is a super antigen concept uh, regarding prevention uh, you have in gas gangrene you do the deprivation of the wound and uh, in case of food poisoning uh, since it's called exotoxin in the food so proper cooking of the food will uh, prevent the disease now you have the figure uh, the figure shows the gas gangrene you can see the area of necrosis on the foot region and this is due to the activity of lecithinase enzyme produced by clostridium perfringens additionally gas may be produced by these organisms and this gas uh, gives the term gas gangrene okay so you have gas and gangrene finally uh, we have the last species of uh, clostridium uh, which is clostridium Uh, difficile so clostridium difficile disease caused is pseudomembranous colitis so it causes the disease which is known as pseudomembranous colitis so it forms a pseudomembrane in the colon that's why it's known as pseudomembranous colitis colitis is for the colon so inflammation of the colon which is known as colitis so clostridium difficile is usually caused by inappropriate use of antibiotic usually an overuse of antibiotic may suppress the normal flora normal flora is or normal bacteria if they are suppressed so clostridium difficile uh, may be present in your colon and it can then 
affect your colon normally it won't affect if normal flow is suppressed for example because of use of excess antibiotic then it may cause pseudo membrane in the colon causing pseudo membranous colitis now the figure shows the pseudo membranous colitis which is typical yellowish plaque like lesions in the colon so yellowish plaque like lesions are basically pseudo membrane and uh, the mechanism of action is of clostridium difficile is again through the exotoxin so the cytotoxin or exotoxin will damage the colon mucosa uh, leading to the formation of a pseudo membrane and hence the term pseudo membranous colitis then we have a uh, corny bacterium uh, a different organism a corny bacterium diphtheria the disease caused is diphtheria as the name indicates diphtheria so what is diphtheria uh, diphtheria is characterized by grayish white pseudo membrane okay so grayish white pseudo membrane uh, it can cover your posterior pharynx and palate region and so that that's a typical uh, grayish white pseudo membrane which may cover your palate pharynx region uh, you can see the figure uh, showing the diphtheria patch covering the posterior pharynx and uh, palate region and the mechanism of action is through exotoxin so diphtheria toxin produced which can inhibit the protein synthesis and that is the mechanism of action of exotoxin now uh, why corn bacterium diphtheria cause disease uh, the major cause is non immunized if uh, you haven't taken the vaccine uh, which is dpt diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccine dpt vaccine uh, in in your early childhood uh, then there are chances that uh, you may be affected with the uh, diphtheria uh, so the prevention is again uh, vaccine if you take the vaccine dpt vaccine in the early childhood Uh, which is a taxoid vaccine uh, then you will be protected against the diphtheria now uh, we will discuss uh, another different gram positive rod uh, which is listeria monocytogens so listeria monocytogens causes two main diseases uh, one is the meningitis and another is sepsis okay so sepsis is when the bacteria spread into the blood stream it may affect vital organs that is sepsis and the risk factors for listeria monocytogens are uh, it usually causes meningitis in the neonates uh, and secondly jo hai immunocompromised for example renal transplant patients who uh, takes immuno uh, who takes drugs that suppresses their immune system no vaccine is available for uh, listeria monocytogens unfortunately uh, you can also pasteurize dairy milk products because one of the sources unpasteurized dairy products so pasteurizing dairy milk products can prevent it then we have the final organism which is gardenella uh, vaginalis gardenella vaginalis uh, the disease caused is bacterial vaginosis so bacterial vaginosis is associated with a typical fishy order so a fish a fish like uh, pungent smelling order will be observed from the vaginal discharge and remember an important property is that gardenella vaginalis is gram variable so what does gram variable mean gram variable mean that some organisms are on gram staining are purple stain while some are pink stain so this is a, a an important property of gardenella vaginalis now the lab diagnosis uh, of uh, gardenella vaginalis include uh, two tests uh, one is the clue cells and another is the whiff test so clue cells mean uh, vaginal epithelial cells can be covered by the bacteria which is gardenella vaginalis they can be seen under the microscope are uh, typical clue cells vaginal epithelial cells covered with the bacteria and uh, another is whiff test so in whiff test what we do we add 10% potassium hydroxide to the vaginal discharge and uh, it will give us a typical pungent smelly fishy order so if you observe a fishy order after adding 10% potassium hydroxide to the vaginal discharge it is positive for uh, gardenella vaginalis and that is a whiff test and another important criteria is the ph so a ph greater than 4.5 mean uh, it is more moving toward the basic side normally ph is less than 4.5 it's becoming greater than 4.5 uh, it's moving toward the alkaline side the vaginal ph so that is also uh, pointing out that uh, there may be gardenella vaginalis present so uh, you can see the figure uh, on the right side you have normal vaginal epithelial cells and on the left side you have uh, clue cells clue cells you can see heavily uh, gram strained 
blue cells observed on the left side of the figure so these can be seen under the microscope uh, and uh, treatment for cardinal vaginal is usually the metronidazole and unfortunately no vaccine is available uh, so that was all about uh, gram positive rods